Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stan Lad. Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 1, Episode 12. Y'all know every every time we do this, I want to say Season 2. <laughs> but don't mess with exes. Yeah. We're going to hit it real quick because a lot didn't happen. This is one of those episodes that I wish we could have just had a lot of meat and skipped on to the cabin part because yeah. that's the part I really want to yeah. get to. Mm -hmm. But on this week... Tisha must have had stopped by Priscilla, McCall's, Taboo, Adam and Eve, or somewhere. But she showed up over there at Kimmy's with a whole bunch of goodies because she's preparing to go on this cabin trip. So she mm. got... Did, did I see that she had edibles? Yeah, she had edibles. Oh, y'all really, really ready to get down uh -huh. up in that cabin. Yes, but don't uh. eat too many of them because it's a slow build. And when it's too late, it's just too late. Yeah. I don't know why I know that, but, <laughs> but you know that. But I know that. Um, yeah, so don't just keep eating them because you don't think nothing happening. Because when it hit, it's gonna be a whole situation that's gonna take you a long time to come yeah, back. Yeah, so from. just eat a piece and wait at least an hour. At least. At least an hour. <laughs> so she's telling, um, yeah, because she's trying to get a freak on. Because last week, you remember her mama said you ain't got to have sex with your man seven nights a week. But at least four of them weeks, there should be some peaches in the air and some and some eggplants being um sprung that way. So she said, let me up my game and I'm going around there and I'm going to get some novelties. And matter of fact, y'all may need to brush up on y'all skills too. So I'm going to bring them for everybody. So we can have yeah. us a good week. So oh, I saw you in for a good week in there, bro. Yeah, that's why she's setting uh -huh. she set, the beer filling she's in. She's setting it up for you nice, bro. Yep. Don't mess it up now. <laughs> Go on with it. Go on with it. <laughs> so Tisha's telling Kimmy about the exchange that she had with Melody, right? And y'all know how it went. Y'all saw it last week. It ain't in well. Mm -hmm. A whole lot was said, but nothing was really resolved. So she's telling um, Kimmy all about it. So later on, Kimmy had an opportunity to get with Mel. And she was like, Mel, uh, Tisha told me about y'all little exchange and it went left real quick. Like, is there a way to bring this to a resolve? Like a happy medium for both of you all. And Mel was like, listen, at the end of the day, yeah, we were doing this, we were doing that. Then I got to a point where life was happening. And I didn't want to buck with no friends. And I didn't want to answer no calls. And I didn't want to answer no texts. And this is where I get confused with Mel. Because in one breath she'll say, nobody's looking out for me. Mm -hmm. Nobody's coming to this. And nobody's doing that. Nobody's texting me. My real friends will get me out the house. And they will call me. And but you're telling her... Not that Tisha do was doing all of those things and yet you didn't want to answer calls and texts. So I get really confused. And then sometimes I think about it like this. Because we're from the church arena and all that good stuff and we know how it works. People want those things, but they want it from specific people. Exactly. So if that specific person doesn't do it, mm -hmm. then did nobody do it. So you can have 15 people check in on somebody that's been feeling ill. But if that one person that they expected to call them... The pastor. They, yeah, didn't call them, <laughs> they didn't know about it, do skit. Exactly. So maybe it's one of those things where people are doing it, but Mel is looking for a specific person to do it. And until that person did it, none of y'all ain't did skit. I don't know. It's just confusing to me. And um, I, I, I don't know how to rationalize it. Yeah, and it comes back to what we talked about before. Is when people enter in relationship, friendships, marriage, people fail to tell people what they want. It's like you keep people guessing on how to satisfy you or how to be a good friend. Are. Yeah, so you will let me do something for you for years and you hate it. When you could have said in the beginning, hey, I, you know, <laughs> I don't like chewing gum. So, so I thought you were going with the flower thing again. Oh, no. Nah, Stanley gets yeah. really upset oh, because right. when we were dating, he used to bring me flowers and send me flowers all the Pacifically time. Specifically roses. And back then, roses was expensive because I was broke. <laughs> I could bail the real two nickels together, so I would save my little bit of money up to get her some roses, and she hated them. Hated I hate them. flowers, period. Hated them. And I, yeah. So if you just begin to communicate what you want, that can alleviate a whole lot of problems. But I think it is that people don't like people don't like to hurt people's feelings. And sometimes it's not about hurting their feelings. It's like it's being honest. Be like, hey, I don't like that. Um, could you stop that? Could you do this? You should do that. But... This has nothing to do with them, but it's kind of one of those um, teachable moments. Sometimes in a relationship, you have to let the person do 
what it is their heart is telling them to do even if it's something that you don't actually appreciate or like for yourself like mm -hmm. him doing getting flowers for me i know that was a big thing for him because like he said i knew that he couldn't afford to do those flowers every you should have told me but I was enjoying receiving something that was coming from his heart every week. And then once we got into a marriage, it actually was like when we were planning our wedding. Hey, because I didn't fix it up. I am, I am. Go on, fix it up and put a bow on it. So sometimes you just got to take it how somebody gives it to you if it's not hurting you. You know what I'm saying? But now that it is our money, I'm like, I hate freaking flowers. You digging yourself in a big old hole. <laughs> no, I'm not. Yeah, you is. How am I digging myself in a hole? Trying to fix it up. I'm not trying to fix it up. What I'm trying to say is just like you bought me a car one time and I didn't want a freaking new car, but <laughs> it was because. <laughs> I'm just bucking with y'all. Okay. I'm going to piss you off, man. I, was like, I know what you're saying. Yeah. You know? I was really getting ready to get hit. You, you were getting ready. Because you know I don't like to be wrong. I, I was getting ready to ask <laughs> the left, right, and get up out of here because I see smoke started coming out of your car. <laughs> So I, it's not that I wanted the car, I needed the car. He wanted to buy me a car, so I took a car. Dang it. It's okay, it's over with, though. All of it's over with. I'm and this is the other part of real quick, you know, why we all in this <laughs> friendships and relationships. Also, too. How did we get here? People's knees change. So, in other words, I, I might like my shoulders rub in the beginning of the relationship. Get into the relationship, I don't want shoulders rub no more. You want your I want balls rub. I, I, Hey, that too. I might want my feet rubbed. But we will sit there and be like, I hope they do this. I hope they do that. I hope they do this. Tell, I hope them. That. Tell them, you know what? I don't want my freaking shoulders rubbed no more. I want you to start rubbing my feet or messing with my boop. You can roll camera. <laughs> like Kimmy said, Kimmy was like in a, in a friendship, back to what we were saying. Tell me what you need because I'm not one that's going to trail behind you yeah. picking up clues and crumbs on what you need from me. Yeah. If you need me to do this, I will do that. But if you're giving me the impression that you good and you okay, then that's the only thing I can go off of. That's that exactly. DMV for real, for real. Mm -hmm. And um, in the same breath, Mel was saying, you know, y'all, she didn't come to any of my events and nothing like that. At that point, I wouldn't have came to any of your events either because if you're ignoring my text and mm -hmm. you're ignoring my telephone calls, that leads me to believe that either one, you don't want to be dealt with at this time, mm -hmm. and then two, maybe it's a me issue. Yeah. So until I know it's not me, <clears throat> I'm just going I'm just gonna lay in the cut until I know that the coast is clear because what we're not going to do is do that fake stuff in public. So in other words, it all could have been fixed then when she got the first, yeah, when she got the first text, Mel could have texted her back and be like, I'm not trying to be distant. I'm not trying to be a bad friend. I'm going through a lot right now and I just want to be by myself. Exactly. Just let me get my space and move on from there. Yeah. And all this would have been alleviated. Yeah. Cause I'm still confused. Yeah. But anyway, Maurice, Maurice and his ex-wife, Kaiwa. <laughs> they have a video chat, right? Because he's still adamant about bringing his son to Huntsville and all that. And I, I can dig it. Yeah. But she, as the mom, and as Kimmy said on the last episode, I get it. I get that she doesn't want to just put her son on the plane and send him to his dad. She has always had him. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard for her to detach from him and trust that you are going to be able to pick up where she left off at. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And Mama Bear ain't having none of it because there is a personal issue that she has with Kimmy that I believe only resides here. I think I think it's from the show with her with Kimmy saying that she don't want a parent anymore. And I know what she's saying, she don't want to raise another kid anymore. Uh -huh, so I'm not saying that she she never said that she don't she wouldn't. She said she just don't want to. So I think maybe that's what's going on in her head. I believe that that her watching the show has put up is painted a negative. From me, I get it. From my standpoint, when I heard her say it, I got it right off the bat. Yeah. But I'm not a mother, and I'm not his mother. Mm -hmm. So hearing that from a person, and I'm thinking about putting my son in your household, yeah, how and you, you're how telling you me that I've raised mine. If yeah. you can't be primary parent then we need to rethink this because that's what I'm not about. It may sound differently Yeah. when the mother hears it. And she's telling Maurice, I don't like who you're with. 
And he was like, you don't even know her. You've mm -hmm. never had a conversation with her. And I kind of fought Maurice on this too, because as, as long as they have been together, him and Kimmy have been together for a while. Why haven't Kaiwa and Kimmy had a conversation? Because her son has come and been in that household during mm -hmm. the summers. I'm not a parent, but I know this. I am going to have a conversation with the people that are going to be watching my child. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe he has, and it just, just number one. And maybe we're just doing we're some sponsor yeah, some, some shows for the show. <laughs> yeah, know. so you know, Maurice, if you want to slip on to the email or slip on to the IG. Don't email, slip nothing. And, and let us know. I got, too many people. Right <laughs> I got too many people in my email as it is. I told y'all. Nah. If, if the right people do it. I but like care. you said, you know, we definitely not going to judge anyone else on this show based upon the show because it's just heavily edited. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so we just only go by what we see. So, so yeah. Maurice came up with this brilliant, <laughs> dumb idea. Maurice, you know you my boy. But just like everybody else on this show, I give it to him and I yeah, give it to him Yeah, you him shouldn't all. have done it that way, bro. You <laughs> should. He, see, first of all, I didn't even know Kaiwa was um, remarried. I yeah. had one exchange with Kawa because I said something on the review and she was like, let me get you straight first to friggin' all. It wasn't like that. Like, yeah. Kawa was like that. It was funny. Though. We had a good yeah. conversation about her, about the wedding. But anywho, uh, when did she get remarried and what kind of jobs they got where they could just pick up, leave and come and live in Huntsville? Yeah. But Maurice introduced this idea of sending them plane tickets so that they can come and maybe move to Huntsville so that Monster can be closer. In a perfect world, that sounds great. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. In a perfect world, I'd be like, mm -hmm. okay, you know, a plane ride or a 30-minute car drive to my child. Sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. But once Maurice took that information to his sister, she said, dude. She was like, no. Run all your dumb ideas by, by me, me first. Because I would have told you, I would have took and told you right off the bat that I that thought, skip wasn't going to work. I thought he had that conversation with Kimmy first. Me that he too. was doing that. So that's like, that's like marriage 101 that, you know, some decisions you make, you can, you know, not tell your spouse because you know y'all good. But bringing your whole ex-wife from <laughs> one location <laughs> to, to, this one? to your uh, close proximity like that and then talking about living there. Whoo! And and the and the two don't get along. And like uh, Marie's sister said, you're dealing with two people with the same type of personalities. Uh -huh. They don't go down easily. Slick at the mouth. And they slick at the mouth. And next day we know somebody's gonna be somebody. I ain't gonna get what. Well, and she stop. said, and when she said what she said to uh, Marie's two kind of hit home with me. It was like everybody don't take the high road like you. Right. And that's the way. Like me and Marie's think the exact same way. It's like you know. Let us all get along. Let's get this thing right because yeah. it ain't really about us. It's about monster being raised the right way. So us as adults need to put our differences to the side. But in the real world, adults act like kids most of the time. And we can be petty. Certain yeah. female, we can be petty. Mm -hmm. I had a petty moment last week. Y'all saw it. Yeah, yeah. We apologize for that I too, don't. family. I mean, we don't apologize for what we said because <laughs> we did mean what we said, but we said we never going to bring that kind of stuff to the channel. And we kind of went on our words, so we apologize for that. You apologize. But anyway, <laughs> um, we having an open house for these houses, right? The, the houses that maybe the comeback group built. Somebody done, 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 done built them. <laughs> they up. And they ready for sale, right? They're nice, too. And they're really and, nice homes. And the price. I need to move to Huntsville, y'all. Yeah. That nice house sold for two hundred and twelve thousand dollars above oh, listing the listing price. price. Like, what's the, so what's the what price of the, the house? Price. Yeah, what was the listing price of the house? Was it like two hundred? In Virginia, is it the most expensive state? But do you know that that that, that condos go for two hundred thousand? Yeah, and that's on the worse side of town. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah on that's on the on the worse. Yeah, yeah, that's on the where you need a couple of bars, yeah. ADT. You yeah, know, so like over there, it's like 200000 but come over, over to where on the outside, outside, it'll be almost a half a million. Yeah. Yeah. So, I need to get on. I need to transfer my good job. Yeah, down at Huntsville. So, I need to call NASDAQ. Ma matter of fact, you put like, hey, Marceau and Maurice, can we have a job? <laughs> hey. 
I have a degree. Hey. I come to, I ain't working for free though. I'm gonna need to be a good see. I don't know what the cost of living is, so I can't even tell you what my expected salary is. I'll look uh, it up and I'll email you. Yeah. How about that? Because <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna need one of them two hundred and twelve thousand dollar homes. Hey. I'm gonna need that in my life. Hey. Because Richmond, come, Richmond is killing me. Yeah. <laughs> It killing me, man. <laughs> taking all my money. I don't need no more back. They no taking all my money. Man, I was, I was, I was in my feelings. I, said, I was floored for the yeah. For that much house. All right. Yeah. Well, we at the house and the Scots came through. Well, Maurice, Maurice and Kimmy came through, and of course the Holt. And like um, Melody said, we ain't good, but you know how I said it last time. It's showtime. She walked up in that house and her and Martel gave each other that church hug. That church hug, you know. That, and the brothers know. looked at them like, hey, this some bullshit. Like, <laughs> if y'all don't sit down, y'all ain't fooling nobody more. And you ain't feeling him. Speaking of them church hugs at our last church, we had this girl. Oh. You couldn't mm. give her the church hug. She killed you. Man, she would almost try to take her titties and put them through your goddamn chest. <laughs> That's and then, she, and then she hit you. Yep. Like, like, I'm like, I didn't, I didn't know that titties could hurt. <laughs> well, Maurice actually ended up having a conversation with Martel. <sighs> I don't know what else to say. I don't know what to do. I don't, because Martel just kind of just, he goes all over the place and then he comes back and then you kind of can see where he's coming from. And then you're like, that's not how it went. But what had happened was, he told Maurice, you and your brother were not you. He ain't never gave me no good marital advice. He ain't never did this and he ain't never this. And Maurice was like, hold on. What you're not going to do is do this. Because we all were rooting for you. We yeah. were in, the top, in my tower of We were rooting for you. <laughs> we were on your side. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here thinking, all through the first half of the season, yeah. all I ever heard them do was tell you, get rid of them the phones. phones. Yep. You got two phones. phones. Yep. You need to make sure that you get that straight. You need to do mm -hmm. this. And, and that was my that was my soul. And my, yeah, my most soul. of the time my it was my, my soul. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that was that was one of the things that I loved about the show because you hardly ever see men dig into another man's A when he doing wrong. That's right. And I was like, okay, so I know that Especially I'm remembering this cheating. right. We dab each other for cheating. Yeah. Uh -huh. So when you see somebody tell somebody, dude, your slip is showing, <clears throat> I'm like, okay, I can dig this. So I'm trying to figure out. I think it's another what, issue. It's something else. What did? I think it's something that we not seeing in the editing that, that's the And stuff. then Martel says this. You, you know how your brother always tell me he's not in a position to tell me anything about marriage or give me marital advice? And then he goes into that. And I said, Maso, what does Martel have for you? you? Yeah, because he's not letting go of these 20 women. He's like, you. every time he always comes back to that. <laughs> and if that is true, then I'm with Martel on that. You really can't tell me a whole lot of skit about my marriage right now if I don't watch you do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yours may be over here, there, and everywhere, and I just might be committed to my one girlfriend, but I, I, I'm so confused on it. Yeah. But when he says stuff like that, it kind of makes you think, like, is, is, is my so guilty? <laughs> because he just, he, he won't let up off of it. Yeah, he won't let up off of it. I don't, I don't know. But we're going to stand around, Marcel, and we're going to wait to see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Martel goes to another session with his therapist. And it was more of a recap mm -hmm. and an overview. And uh, what did you get out of this first one? And what have you decided to do differently mm -hmm. to get a different result? You know, insanity is doing the same thing <clears throat> over and over and over, waiting for a different result. So what you doing? And Martel was like, you know what? I realized for myself that I need to change. For me. And he was like, that's what mm. I've been waiting for you to say. Because mm -hmm. you can't change for someone else. Because for one, you're going to be miserable. That's right. And it's going to be short-lived. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you think you got up to a point where they don't backed up off of you, yeah. you become more crafty in doing what you do mm -hmm. so that you don't disappoint them. Not necessarily that you change. So he, he's talking a good game. We just going to have to see this thing being worked out and walked out. Um, but I do. I like his therapist, though. Yeah, yeah. So, when he said he want to change for himself, I said, all right, Martel, we just need to see you do it, brother. Yeah, you got to come through. Um, 
Nope, I ain't gonna say what I wanna say. Mel's mom <laughs> comes into town, right? And um, the kids all downstairs eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. This is what I like about the show too, because we ain't got no tuna wraps, no chicken salad wraps. We got peanut, peanut butter, butter and jelly, jelly and we gonna pray over it because the yep. Lord is good. Hey. Amen. And the kids are talking and then the adults are right beside them talking about this conversation about how Martell is not sleeping in the room, in the bed anymore. I'm like, because y'all sitting there in front of the kids, man? I said, them kids is right there. Yeah. Mama called and Mama said. Mama's like, oh, you know, we got to get them upstairs. Take them kids upstairs. Because kids can't. will act like they don't hear nothing you saying and hearing everything. Add that. So I thought that was real good of Mama to mm -hmm. get them kids out of there before they have a um, conversation. But Mel had never told her mom mm -hmm. that, you know, they decided to start sleeping separately. But he is in the same home, you know. While we try to figure out what it is that we want to do, she tells her mom again that this same female, the female, the female, mm -hmm. you know, called the whole Atlanta thing all over again. And I agree with Mel on this one. You can't tell your mom everything. That's right. Because here's the thing. <clears throat> mama will be mad until that youngest kid graduate college. Yep. And y'all still to go. Yep. So I agree. You just can't tell them everything. Sometimes you just got to talk to your friends and everybody else that you can just go ah 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 with. But the mamas, yeah. the mamas gonna hold on to it just like they. Who the hell is basing like that? Yeah, we, we, we the shoot hood. the video. <laughs> you would thought I, we lived all in the hood. All that comes, we start shooting the video. But I, it made me think that we've been get, been together for like over twenty years now, and I have never said one bad thing about her to my mom. You can't. Not, one. I don't have any bad qualities. No, what I'm saying is, <laughs> <laughs> anytime we had any disagreements or stuff didn't flow, yeah. most of the time men will run back and talk to their mama to get some advice on how to handle their wives. And to me, it can it can sometimes go good or sometimes go bad. In my scenarios or my experience, it always has been bad that the mama start thinking of mm. a different way towards the wife and she'll start losing respect for her. So every time she see her, she don't see the good stuff. She just see what he did what she did to her son, mm -hmm. and it ain't fair, and it ain't right. Uh -huh, she so, ain't no good. I ain't never want to plant no bad seeds in her head so that every time she see her, that is always respect, and that she loved the daughter, love the daughter-in-law that she come to know, and not what I impose on her, because you know, when we go back and tell mama, we're going to tell mama what we did. We're going to tell mama everything that she did. She ain't did this, she ain't did that, she ain't doing this. And mama going to be like, it don't make no sense. She, I, I knew she wasn't no real woman. I knew. I, and, and and so it goes left. So you been faking for yeah, 20 years? Yeah, yeah, so it goes left. So I decide not to even do that. Nah. I don't even tell mm -hmm. her. And vice versa, my mom lives in this house. Mm -hmm. She ain't never had, never. Ever. Like literally when she doesn't see me and Stanley up underneath each other, she'd be like, Y'all yeah. alright? Yeah, we don't be underneath each other 24 7 But in her mind, because she always sees us very connected. Yeah. If I'm on the sofa just laid out a little bit, where's Stanley? He good. Yeah. He, he over there somewhere. He so, outside. So I don't think it's fair for my mama to carry the burden of my marriage. I don't want to sign up for it. Yeah. So I have to carry the burden. And and like you said, it's gonna be on the side of their son. But I don't But the know. good thing it's been beautiful. Not perfect. Yeah. But beautiful. Now I was gonna say, I don't know because the way your family love me, they might even they might even be on They my might side. even take your side, yeah. Yeah, they <laughs> might. Yeah. <laughs> they gonna be like, I know, I know my son and I know my nephew. So yeah, she was mm -hmm. right. That that knuck if you buck, she you know, she had to hit it down hard, but it was her fault. He probably did something. He did something. Yeah. So Maso and Tisha over at the house, and they having this conversation about her podcast. And Maso was like, you know, I'm being supportive. Being supportive. I'm being supportive. Mm -hmm. Maso, I'm proud of you, man, because I saw that little thing that Tisha put on Instagram last week, and you were picking the kids up from school and all that. Good look, bro. That's why your beard coming in. <laughs> um, <laughs> next thing we know, we get a knock at the door, and Maso was like, you expected someone? Tisha so looking like, that. la, 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 la. Say, Mama's back. Mama Wanda don't showed up with two full grown suitcases, <laughs> as Monso would say. And she has been invited to come and stay for two weeks. Now, Tisha, you know you is wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You two are, weeks though? You are wrong as wrong as unseasoned chicken wrong. <laughs> what? Two weeks. Now, I don't even if your husband and your mother had the best relationship. And they got along and it was almost like an extension of his mama when she came through the door. 
you still don't spring that on nobody like that. Yeah. Because, like, when we invite my mama here for two weeks, yeah, it's... it's I have it's to mentally agreed. prepare. It's agreed on that she's going to be here. Yeah. But it makes sense for, for her to come for two weeks because most times we pick her up and take her back home. Yeah. So, so his mama's here for two weeks. Yeah. And we literally have to keep her going for two weeks. So I have to mentally prepare. We got work. We got to do these YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. We have another channel. If y'all know about that, like with us TV. That's why I'm bland up today because I was doing a beauty video, all that good stuff, whatever. Um... Yeah, but check out our beauty, um, our, um, not beauty video, um, yeah, lifestyle vid um, channel. Yeah, Lifestyle TV. Yeah, it's, it's, down, it's down in the description for you. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and my son said, Tisha, can I talk to you for a minute? <laughs> so they're having a conversation in what I assume to be their room now. Yeah. The off limits room just for them. And Mama Wanda comes busting through the door. Did not, did not. Just, just open the door, you know, as if it was her room. Let me tell you something, Mama Wanda. <laughs> why I got you on the line. <laughs> just because of the kind of person that I am, I, man, I hope to God if you ever do that again, you see your daughter's hind parts in the air. Yep. And your son-in-law giving it to her. You yep. want to know why? Because that's disrespectful. Yep. So and that's you, an image that's ain't gonna never come out your and mind. And I never wanted to leave your yep. mind because mm -hmm. you were wrong for going into their bedroom. That's right. Do you remember when you had your children and how you I you a black mama? I yep. know your bedroom was off limits. Yep. Man, I'm I when I got grown and I went to my mama's house before she moved in with us. I still didn't step foot. Like, I would literally be in the door seal. Yeah. Like, you had to invite me in. Yeah. yeah you got to invite like, me in. She like, go in the dress and get me. I'm like, you sure about that? <laughs> you know, it was almost like the alarm was going to go out. Because the thing about it, you just never know what you're going to see. And my mama was and, a freak. And, and if you see something, you can't unsee it. Yeah. Because I don't see some skin in my mama and them wrong. So you want to walk in there like this. Yeah. And don't and go you, in that drawer. You, you, you peek like this. and like, hmm. I got it. I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> be like, why is my hand sticky? <laughs> But anyway. That's how we found a whole lot of nasty movies. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Vibrators. I mean, my, I mean, back in the day. It was crazy, man. It won't like it is today. Like, you know, it's normal today to have that kind of stuff. Now, but back in them days, what, where did y'all get hey, from? Hey, y'all let us know this in the comments field right here. Did y'all parents take, like, the regular movies that y'all that they would buy from the store from y'all or for the house for y'all to watch and then take it and put something over top of it and change the name to the nasty movie tape? As if you don't know what it is, you know, taboo one, two, three. You know, we talking real old school yeah, now. Debbie, Debbie does, does Dallas. Dallas. Yeah, that kind of stuff Debbie like that. Debbie does Huntsville. Yeah, you know, the black, <laughs> black taboo. Drill. Uh, all that. But yeah, but they would put it on top of it and put it on tape that you already watch. My mama and them recorded over my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And you was hot. Man, I love the turtles when I was growing up, man. And they gonna record that skit over my turtles? I was so mad. Come on back. It's over, man. It's I'm, good. You gonna have to buy me a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Because I'm not over it. I just really what, what, just... The first one? I guess it was the first one. I don't even remember. Yeah, because you know they don't came out about five, six, or seven. Yeah, it was the first one. Yeah. And they record. she put that tape over and she recorded over my skit. I was pissed. You hear me? But why would you do that when you know that I like the turtles? Nasty moves meant more to it than your ninja, ninja turtles. Because I went and watched the turtles and I didn't see them. I seen some. You seen some turtles? I seen some. Like on okay, that thing about House Party Three and said that ain't no turtles. That, <laughs> that's A. <laughs> Y'all over there on House Party where they're supposed to put the table there for her to watch Ninja Turtles, but the table yeah. got switched up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Got switched up. It's the exact scenario. It's it ain't no turtles. Let's get off of this. Yeah. Y'all like, <laughs> like yeah, what? It's definitely Sunday and it's late. Um, Mel, Mel goes to speak to her financial advisor. Right? I really don't understand what we were supposed to get out of this conversation because it's almost like when you go and ask for advice, but you really don't. Don't. Want it. Yeah. So she asked him. You know, she pretty much told him. You know, we're seeking a divorce. And mind you, this financial advisor not only gives him financial advice, he's all also kind of like a mentor, a family friend. Yeah. So the lines cross. So he's like, you know, I hate to hear this. You know, is he doing everything he's supposed to do? Is he doing flowers? Is he a good husband? I mean, a good father. You know, she was like, he does all of those things. He's a good father. 
He FaceTimed me during the day, flowers, you know, dates yeah. on a dime. Mm -hmm. All that. I said, just tell him what he did. What he did. And maybe his tone would change a little bit. Mm -hmm. And because he looked like all the boxes are checked. <laughs> and he's from that old school. As long as I'm taking care of, you know how they say you're old lady. Uh -huh. As long as I'm taking care of the old lady, and you know she got money, you know I'm, I'm providing the meat. You know she cooking the meat. You know you know marriage should be good. That's not true. Mm -hmm. And he's telling Mel, you know she's saying that once we liquidate everything, I really want a fair split. You know I don't want all this contention, all of that. And he looked at her. He said that's not possible. Yeah. He said, in my experience, I've never, I've never seen it. Seen it work that way. Yeah, I work in finances. I'm a, <coughs> I am a, um, yeah, we, an we analyst by trade, mm -hmm. and I have never seen it. Yeah. And I've been doing, I have been with my company for 22 years, mm -hmm. and I have never yep. seen it. And get into a joint ten state. Yeah. Oh, it really gets real. It's real messy. I've talked to some financial advisors and they be so... You would think that they was getting divorced. Yeah, it's stressful. Yeah, it's because so they, they want to divide them assets and, you know, if it's 500000 they both want two hundred fifty dollars apiece. It, it could be two hundred fifty thousand one cent. cent. I don't know. I want you to divide that one cent. <laughs> she got hit with me. It's, it's, it's a lot because yeah. people get petty because their feelings are involved. Mm -hmm. um, and especially when you usually have one person that wanted to divorce, the other person is at fault for something. It just, it, it gets real. Yeah, because he told her, told Mel to wait for 12 more months. Yeah, because he was like, how long have you been in your house? Mm -hmm. And she was like, a year. He said, you need to stick this out for at least 12 more months so you can get that $500,000 tax break or whatever that meant. I, I don't yeah. know about that one. And she was like, and this is what I love about Mel. Mel says the right things. Mm -hmm. And you want to be like, yes, girl, yes. You got it. But, but then we, Execution. Yeah. You know, execute on And then, like I told y'all, I still don't know what the hell's real and what's not real. I'm going to be honest with you. But something kind of sparked me that he said, too, when he was talking about when she told him that they were getting a voice. And he was like, you know, we're about building dynasties around here. So it was almost like, you know what, I know you want to get a divorce, but nah, we can't afford for y'all dynasty to fall apart because we need that here. So it's like, I care more about the dynasty than I do y'all relationship. Well, the image of black excellence without yeah. being excellent. Yeah. Yeah, I got that too. But Mel was like, she said, you know right, what, I, I, I understand back in the day that people stayed in marriages for 20, 30 years because of the milestones. And the longer they stayed, the more props they got for having a marriage of that, you know, of that tenure and all that. But if I'm not happy and I'm not getting my needs met and I'm not getting fulfilled within my marriage, I don't really care about being mm -hmm. together for the long haul yeah. if I'm not happy. Kudos to you saying that. Yeah. Now I just need to make sure that it's I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We're going to keep watching. We'll keep watching we go, and see what happens. We're going to keep watching. But I, I get that. And, and I'm with Mel on that one because let me tell y'all a good story right here. I'm going to tell y'all some of my family business. Don't y'all judge my family because y'all are <laughs> fucked up too. When my granddaddy died, and I'm a granddaddy's girl. So for me to tell y'all that I like y'all. My granddaddy died, right? It's not funny he died, but it's funny about this funeral. Let me tell you Ooh, something, man. baby. Let me tell you. Now, my grandma and my grandfather were probably married like 50 years, something like that. Hmm. But my granddaddy had a weird word dick too. And it was one of those things like Mel said. They just stayed in it. The tenure was there. They had all these kids. Um, I have 13 aunts and uncles. Huge family. Stayed in it unhappy. He messed with everything up and down the street. Blah, 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 blah. At the funeral, we're in the line. We all sit down and the family is sitting to the left and the line is still coming in. After the grandchildren, you still got all these folk behind us because we're huge. I look to my right. Why is his mistress in the family line with us, y'all? <laughs> my aunts were on ready you hear what I say now you can see them all like three two one you go dive on her dive on her we gonna turn this guy door casket over and I'm saying to myself why you why why you mad though that's her man too <laughs> grandma didn't do nothing about this mm -hmm. when he was living 
She Fiend knew. Fiend Fiend knew that about why it go. Yeah. It wasn't hidden. If I know who she is, grandma knows who she is. So y'all, y'all, y'all settled down. But that's what they did back in the day. They just, they just took it. They, whatever the man wanted to do, they just let them do it. And they lived with it because sometimes the men had them really comfortable. My grandma, I guess, was really comfortable. But that mistress, she was at that funeral with us because her man had died too. And she needed to grieve just like the rest of us. Straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Two up, two down. Holla.